We're going to look now at a certain type of management problem which occurs quite often where we try to maximise something such as profits and we have a choice of different options of production, a different mix or balance of the way that we produce things. And the technique we're going to look at is called linear programming. So let's use an example to see how this works. Let's suppose we've got a company which is making two different styles of microwave oven, the alpha and the, and the beta oven. The alpha sells for £40 profit, whereas the beta sells for slightly more, £50 profit. So it sounds though like beta's better, you're going to make more profit. But what needs to go into each of these? Well we have different constraints. Let's suppose for example that the alpha takes four hours to put together but the beta takes six hours. So that's going to be a factor. It's, it's more expensive to manufacture the beta. And in fact we've only got a limited amount of labour. Let's suppose we've got two uh, workers who can each work a 48 hour week. So we have two uh, workers each on a 48 hour week. So that's a limitation on how many hours of production we've got available. Another difference is that the alpha microwave has got two built-in clocks and the beta only has one and we've only got, we can only get 20 of these clocks each week. So the alpha needs two clocks, the beta needs one clock and there are 20 available. So alphas use up more clocks than the betas. And lastly, the final constraint, as they're called, these limitations, is that the company decides it wants to make at least six of the betas each week. So we need at least six betas each week. So that's the, that's the, the, the background. That's the uh, specifications for our project. And we've got to try and decide how many alphas and betas we can make that will maximise the profit. So we set this up in the following way, and this is often called formulating the problem. The thing we're trying to maximise is the total profit. Every alpha microwave makes £40. What we have to do, it's crucial in this uh, topic, is to introduce some variables, some letters, for the number of each that we make. Let's be very simplistic and say let's make A alphas. So we produce A alphas and B betas. They are a variable. Sometimes we might want to use X and Y because we're going to be using graphs with the traditional X and Y axis, but A and B obviously fits here. So the profit we make each week, each alpha makes £40, there are A of them, so we're going to make 40 times A from selling the alphas. And the betas make £50, and we're making B of them, and if we add that profit on, we end up with 50 times B. That's the profit function, sometimes called the objective function. Now what are the constraints, the limitations? Well first of all we've got how many workers hours are available. 
each alpha takes four, there's A of them, so the number of hours that the alphas will take will be 4A. The betas take six, so if there's B of them, that will be 6B. But we've only got 96 hours of labour available. So this cannot be bigger than 96. In fact, it has to be less than or equal to 96. That's the time constraint or the labour constraint. We've also got a problem with clocks. If we make A of the type alpha and each one needs two clocks, that will take up two A clocks. Each of the betas needs one, so that's B. And we've only got 20 clocks, so that's less than or equal to 20. And lastly, the number of betas has to be at least six. So B itself has to be greater than or equal to six. That's called the formulation of the linear programming problem. Sometimes we stress, although it's obvious, that A and B have to be positive. You can't, have, you can't make minus three alpha cookers. Sometimes it's taken for granted. I'll just put it in here that A and B both have to be greater than or equal to zero. So that's the formulation of the problem. Let's now, now, fi now find out which values of A and B will maximise the profit. OK, Mary, so let's have a look at this one. So solve x plus 2x equals 12. So what do you think you do first? OK, well, I want x on its own, so I would put x equals 12 minus 2x. OK, so a lot of the time we want to get x by itself, but what we want to do first is get all of these x's together. So can you see anything we can do with this? Get all these together in one place. Oh, OK, it's 3x, isn't it? Yeah, so absolutely. 3x equals 12. Oh, and so x equals 4. Brilliant, spot on, well done.